Beyond the Badge is brought to you by the Dyna Crime Prevention Fund. Winter weather is here and that means more people are out skating and fishing on local lakes. It also means there's a possibility of thin ice, especially at the beginning and end of the winter season. To prepare for an ice rescue, the Edina Fire Department has various tools at its disposal, including a Mustang flotation suit. Let's go to fire station number one, where Sergeant Aaron White is speaking with Fire Lieutenant Sean White to discuss what equipment firefighters use during an ice water rescue and how to stay safe on the ice. Thank you, Brian. I'm at Edina Fire Station number one today to learn a little bit about ice safety and ice rescue. And to do that, I am joined today by Fire Lieutenant Sean White. Sean, thanks for being on the show again. Thank you very much for having me here. You're, you're kind of a it. veteran at this point. I'm, I'm working on it. A wealth of knowledge. As they Absolutely. Say. All right. Um, we want to learn a little bit about ice safety first. Sure. Um, it's been kind of a, a mild year so far. Absolutely. and. Um, you know, ice conditions, I can tell, are pretty bad. In other words, open water pretty much everywhere. But talk a little bit about the basic ice safety facts here. Sure. I, I think this year creates even more of a problem than it normally would. When you have this constant fluctuation of raising temperatures and lowering, lowering temperatures, the ice doesn't have the ability to freeze uh, mm -hmm. strongly. So even once it starts to uh, create a layer, uh, it's not going to be as stable as it normally is. Right. So with that open water, uh, people get anxious you start to uh, want to get out on the ice even earlier than you normally would. Um, but people need to be very cognizant of how thick that ice is, because mm -hmm. uh, there's a direct correlation to how, how safe, quote unquote, no ice is ever safe ice, right. which is an important thing to remember. But the thicker it is, the, the more weight it can hold. Mm -hmm. so. so we have to have good ice. We need to know what we're doing if we're going out there. I like what you said, and that's ice is really never safe. That's true. Um, but if, if things go wrong, that's where you guys step in. Let's yes, hope that is. doesn't happen. Absolutely. But uh, tell us a little bit, how do you respond to an ice rescue situation? I, I would say it's very similar to all the rescues that we approach. And really it's about sizing up the situation and gathering information. So people who are unseen or may have noticed something are a very valuable resource to us. And we'll, we can come back to that later and some of the things that they can do. But really we approach it as a cascade effect of rescue. And mm -hmm. so we'll have different techniques depending on the situation and what it is that is required of us sure. uh, to gain access to the patient. So we have a, a lot of different equipment that we use depending on the situation. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to have very, very good equipment uh, to be able to respond to those situations. Well, you hit on equipment and we've been kind of standing in a sea of it you here. Have. Um, show us some of what we have here. Sure. So probably the basic thing, and it's something even that our officers carry within the city, which is a great resource, is a throw bag. You mm -hmm. can reach down and grab that for us. We can show them everybody. And this is just, just a big rope bag. So one of the biggest things we want to do is try and reach the person. Mm -hmm. If we don't have to go into the water to go get them, that's the safest for everyone. Sure. So we're going to try and throw a rope to them. And that's something that the, I know the officers will carry these yeah. as well. Um, so that uh, first on scene, you know, getting to these people is uh, yeah. of paramount importance. Yeah. So. Okay. We have, uh, let me reach for more stuff here. This looks kind of fun. I just want to hold this for a while. Absolutely. Yeah. That's like our big, staff. big reaching stick with a nice little loop on the end. And that's mm -hmm. something if we're close enough um, that we can reach out and gives a stable sure. platform for somebody to grab onto yep. if they still have the Again, ability. Again, keeps you out of the water. Absolutely. If all else fails, uh, you get your rope and whatnot. We but, do. Uh, what's in the bag here? And Tell me a little bit about that. And this is our Mustang suit. This is our, our ice rescue survival suit would mm -hmm. be the easiest way to think about it. Anybody watch Deadliest Catch, they have the suits similar to this, but this one's specifically made for, for rescue. Sure. A little more slimmed down, uh, but still has a lot of the same uh, abilities within it. Mm -hmm. um, flotation as well as keeps us warm, relatively speaking. It's still very cold water, yep. um, but it's in an easily deployable bag where we're able to pull it out and uh, then quickly get into the suit and get into the water as necessary. And that's really key. You can't be messing around with equipment for 20 minutes. You Absolutely. need to be able to jump right into this. And, yes. and that was a good test. That came out very it nicely. It came Somebody out exactly how I planned. Yes. Packing that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, very good. You guys have a lot of specialized equipment and training and mm -hmm. cool big red trucks to do this. But if I'm out there and my friend goes through the ice yep. uh, to close today, you know, what can I do? Is there some safe ways that I might be able to help Absolutely. that person before you get there? I would say the number one thing to remember is that we don't want to create more victims in the situation. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to, uh, somebody else to go out there and attempt the rescue. Sure. And I know that would be a very hard thing to do is to stand by. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there are other techniques that we can do. So number one, don't go out onto the ice because we've already proven that it's not safe. Mm -hmm. 
um, reaching. So just like the big stick that you were, you know, so wonderfully showing off, uh, branches, anything you have around. Yeah. If you happen to have a rope, a hose, something like sure. that that you can get out to the person. I think those are really quick, fast techniques. R really the key is if you don't have one of these suits and the right. train to go along with it, we want to do whatever we do from shore. Shore, you okay. know, stay, stay safe from solid land. Yeah. Um, and then another big aspect is, is making sure that you pay attention to what happened, which direction they were traveling, and where that person went through the ice. Absolutely. And that can be very valuable information for very us good. when they arrive. And call 911 right away. Very quickly. Well, thank you, Sean. We appreciate the info today about ice rescue and ice safety. Thanks for having me here. That's Lieutenant Sean White with the Edina Fire Department.